I'm Jeff Strait. I work for the Board of Ed. One of the things I do is help put together the uh, board meetings that end up on uh, good old QAC TV. But our, meet our meetings pale in, in significance or drama compared to the, uh, the county commissioner meetings. We have here a representative of the county commissioner, Jim Moran. You know, I've been to some of them school board meetings and I don't know if they do pale. But uh, I want to thank Fred for inviting me and, and for everybody coming out uh, this evening. Uh, we just finished our budget cycle and uh, it was probably our smoothest we've had in three years. Uh, I will say that uh, I was fortunate enough to be in my, this is my fourth budget now that I've done. Uh, I, I came on in the last term and I was fortunate enough to have Commissioner Dunmire take me under his wing when it came to tax offset. And that was the first year, 2014, when we started the tax offset to give some of that money back for duplication. Uh, we, last year we were at, I think, 80%. Uh, it's called a haircut. We were at 80% giving that back to, to our municipalities. This year right now it's at 85% and I'm pushing for 90% so that next year we could be at 100% and, and uh, to cover some of those duplications. Uh, just to give everybody a little uh, update, the courthouse right down the street here is about 40% complete and it's on budget. The Southern Kent Island sewer, the main, the main trunk line is 30% complete and they're gonna finish early. And then we have the laterals and the tanks and they're, they're running and all that is running uh, on time and on budget. So those are two uh, very large projects that we're very proud of. And uh, you know, we, we are right now, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the budget. So, you know, today we had a meeting with the, uh, uh, the, the, sorry, I'm having a blank here. Uh, it was the, uh, business community, I'm sorry, I should know that anyways, but we had a meeting today with the business community and the 36th representatives, our delegates and our senators were there and they talked about what went on in Annapolis and what they were doing for Queen Anne's County and, and, and the 36th district. And I got a chuckle because they were talking about hundreds of millions of dollars that they're doing in the budget. Well, you know, like the town, the county, our budget is so restricted by the time you cut it up for the school board in, in existing, we have every year probably less than 3%. Well, this year we had like $3.1 million that was left over. Out of that $3.1 million, the state came down and said, you know what, Queen Anne's County, you're, you're a very wealthy county. We're gonna change your calculations for your schools and you have to give them another $1.3 million. So that came right off the top and that went to the schools and that left us with the rest of it. And with that, we, we've brought back our uh, community services, our buses, our buses for our seniors, our buses that, for connectivity in the county and, and former Commissioner Comfort's back here. Thank God he's given us and helping us with getting buses, but we needed to supply the drivers. So we've picked up more drivers so that we were able to take people to dialysis, take them to their doctor's appointments. And that's one thing that I'm, I'm very proud of, not to mention you know, our, uh, the programs we have to help those in th that are less needy, our backpack program. So we, we put money into to the bus drivers, we put money into an emergency uh, management planner for our Department of Emergency Services. So all these things that, that have come back from really, uh, we, we haven't raised taxes in six years and, and when we did raise those taxes there were a lot of cuts that were made but we've been able to bring back all of those services. Uh, our parks, I am the liaison to the parks. You're not going to see us actively going after more park space, but what you're going to see is us spending the money to enhance the parks that we have. Bloomfield, White Marsh, right down the street here. We have a, a plans for putting up split rail all the way around the park, all the way around the, the main drive lanes because people are parking all over the grass that we're trying to get to grow. We're going to pave that entire park. We've just planted some trees. I didn't like the trees, so those trees are all coming out. They were little saplings. We're going to plant, we want trees, and I, I, I'm glad to hear uh, Tim talk about that because I'm a big tree guy. I, you know, the more trees we have, the more shade we have, sucks up the nutrients, doesn't get it as hot, and, and it just looks a lot nicer. So we, we are working on that. Down at Love Point, we're, we're redoing all the parking lots down there. Cross Island Trail, we're repairing the Cross Island Trail. There's a lot of ruts, there's a lot of uh, cracking going on, so we're repairing those kind of things. So, you know, the county is, is spending that money in, in, in fiscally responsible as best we can. Uh, I will say that um, one of the things that myself and Commissioner Steve Wilson have been working on is our, our aging population. And with that comes our, our delivery of emergency care. And we have been working with uh, Shore Health 
to come up with some sort of a plan to get observation beds at our new standalone emergency center. Because right now, anybody that gets called, depending on what, what the uh, severity of the issue is, we have to transport to Annapolis. And we, when we do that, it takes a unit out of service, and that hurts. So what we're trying to do is add beds to the emergency, emergency center that we have here for observation. We're not talking about anything major, but some of the times when they go across Annapolis, they, they hold them for six, eight hours, and then they release them. And we want to have that option here so that we don't take all of our emergency services out when, when we don't need them. Uh, another big thing, and, and well, first I'm going to go back to the, to the school board a little bit. And uh, you know, there's, we've been working extremely well at the school board, and, and I'm, I'm kind of proud of that. And every year, I'd say every year since I've been here, it, they've uh, maintenance of effort, we've gone at least anywhere from 1.3 to $3 million above maintenance effort to give them what they need for our kids. And uh, I, I'm proud to say I was the one that came up with the Chromebooks and, and found the funding for the Chromebooks to, for all of our students to have Chromebooks, which is very big. I mean, you know, the, we're in the age of technology and we need that. But I will say in the last three years, respectively, a po school population have gone down 16, 17, and then this year it went up by one. So we don't have a lot of growth in our, in our schools with students. So, you know, with that being said, uh, we did approve the addition to Graysonville Elementary School. The, the, the classroom size there, they have a lot of temporaries outside, and, and that, that project is going to be moving forward starting this summer. They'll start the construction on that. Uh, the other big thing that, that we are fighting in Queen Anne's County is the Bay Bridge. The Bay Bridge is going to be the demise of us all. And since we're talking about death and taxes, uh, I, I, there's the, the study that the state paid for and did showed a growth of about 1% of vehicles going across that bridge every year. Actual numbers are anywhere from 3 to 5%. So they were, they were implying that critical mass for the Bay Bridge will hit us somewhere around 2032 or something, somewhere in that neighborhood. The, news, the new numbers that we're getting now are showing it going to hit us in 2027, 10 years from now. And if the state said tomorrow, we're building a new bridge, it would take anywhere from 14 to 16 years before we're actually driving across it. So there is, a, 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 I don't want to use the word state of emergency, but there is urgency in getting that message and getting that information to the state so that they can start planning to move forward with a bridge either here or anywhere else just to relieve the, the, the traffic. because. Queen Anne's County does not have a traffic problem. The state of Maryland has a traffic problem. And it, it just happens to flood our neighborhoods all through Route 50 coming from uh, the, the split all the way to the Bay Bridge. So those are some of the, the major things that are going on. Oh, and, and, and I would be remiss if I didn't say this and toot our own little horn here. Queen Anne's County for the first time this year ever got a AAA bond rating from uh, Fitch in, in New York City, which is, if you think back to when Six years ago, we had to raise taxes and there was no rainy day fund. All the money was gone. We had to lay off almost 25% of our workforce to where we are six years later. We have a healthy reserves. We have, you know, we actually are the highest reserves we've ever had. We're almost pushing 10% on our reserves. And, and, and our bond rating is up there. So that means now the money that we borrow for the courthouse is costing us much less than it was just a year ago. So over time, as we retire some of these older bonds and these newer bonds, it's all saving to, savings to the taxpayers of Queen Anne's County. So with that, I'm, since he hasn't dinged me yet, I'll, I'll take any questions anybody wants to ask about any topics in the county. Mr. Comfort. Follow up from a year ago. So what are we doing with the high, uh, the high school field, the like football field? Is anything changing on that? No. Uh, the short answer is no. I mean, as you, as you know, I, I had that in the budget to do two turf fields. It got cut out. We had some more, you know, pressing matters. I'd love to revisit that someday. But the problem is when you deal with not so much the school board, but when you deal with government versus I come from the private sector, private schools, we're able to put one of those fields in for $600,000. We try to do it at a high school here, they cost about a million dollars because you got to follow certain rules and regulations, so it's more expensive. So that's, that is a, a want and not a need at this present time. And, and just to give you an example where some of that money went, we have caught up on paving and, and sealing all of our roadways. We have now in the last, in just three years, we've done all the roads that we need to do to get back to current. And now we start the cycle. We're normally, I think it's like on a, a nine-year cycle 
where every nine years you'll get your road repaved or resealed or recoded, and we're back to caught up on that. And that's another thing that the rating markets look at that, that says, you know, we, we are very, at any given time, if the economy was to take a turn, we could stop doing all that and we would still be fine because we're caught up. Anybody else? How much would a new bay bridge cost? <laughs> a new bay bridge is, is about, uh, right now, they're saying about a half a billion dollars. And, but you've got to remember, 90% of that is paid by the federal government. So the state would have to come up with, you know, the, their portion of it. I'm sorry, not ha half a billion. It's it's a uh, 5.5 billion. Sorry, <laughs> because it's all the infrastructure. It, it it covers everything from 90. You know, the, the original plan was everything from 97 to the 5301 split. Because you're going to have to add lanes. You got to put up new bridges, new off and on ramps. It, it is a huge, uh, daunting task. But the state would have to come up with a, with a half a billion dollars. They'd have to come up with 500 million. And I was fortunate enough to sit with Senator Cardin just two days ago talking about the health care in our MIC program, which is very successful. That's another program that I was on the ground floor with in funding where we put a, a nurse practitioner and an off-duty paramedic, we put them in a unit and they visit the frequent 911 callers. And that has reduced our 911 calls and our units going out of service by over 80%. So the program's very working. Senator Cardin was very impressed with it and he wants to see if he can use it in other rural areas of the, of the, of the state. So that, that's very nice. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask a question about the tolls on the bridge. Where mm -hmm. does that money go? That, was, that money is restricted, and Paul probably knows this better, but that money is restricted for the maintenance only, or, or the bridges only in MTA's uh, wheelhouse, for lack of a better term. So if they make money, for instance, the Bay Bridge, and when you pay that toll, it's to fix the Bay Bridge, to maintain the Bay Bridge, or it's to maintain one of their other projects, the Key Bridge, or the, uh, the inter-county connectors, anything that's in, in their purview. One more time. Okay. You mentioned the uh, observational beds being added to the emergency center. Is there a process of certification? Absolutely. And it is a. How long would that take? It could take anywhere from two years to five years. It's, it's, it's political, too. So just not something that we can easily just say, we want to apply for this. We have to, you have to do the studies. You've got to show that there's a need for it. You've got to show that you have the capacity to to handle those beds. And then, remember now, if, if, if somebody's in, in a bed in our emergency center, they're not in a bed in a hospital. So the hospitals lose money. And uh, I hate to say it, but sometimes our medicine, our, our medical care is financially driven. And we, you know, so you have to, it, there's checks and balances there. So we are working on that. We, we, we are actively pursuing that, but it, it is gonna be a, a long drawn out process. No different than when we got that standalone. I, th I think that took us three or four years to get the standalone emergency center. Yes, sir. Two things. Over the last year or two, the city bought a building across Liberty Road across the Mario Road. Okay. And the reason stated was for parking for the new courthouse. Correct. I was kind of confused as to why the city was buying that property. But Great question. And the other question, similar but takes back a little further, the city bought from the county the uh, dock, the court. Uh, the war. I don't know. I don't understand. I mean, the two facilities are there. Why does the city have to pay the county for the work that's already there and operating? I know we're making improvements. Give us more opportunities to spend our tax money mm -hmm. to, to improve a facility that's used by people in the county. Okay. First, I'm going to address the parking lot. Uh, which is uh, it's the Ashley building is what you're referring to. It's the building next to the Liberty building as you're facing it to the left. We actually paid for that. The county, Fee and Lou, I think we, we wrote a check for a million dollars to the town so the town could purchase it and now they have it in their inventory but uh, the county is the one who basically paid for that. Fee and Lou. Fee and Lou, meaning that when you build a courthouse you've got to have enough parking for that courthouse. So we had parking that was scattered all over the town, and, and the town said, look, that's not really going to work. And we said, okay, well, wh what do you propose? And one of the proposals were, well, we could buy this land, and you, we could use that as a parking lot, which is behind the building. It's a huge parking lot. So it's a fee and loose. So what they do is they basically turn to the county and say, instead of you paying us yearly, we'll take a lump sum, we'll pay for the parking lot, and we'll have the parking lot. 
the wharf is what you're referring to, the wharf, the county owned that. The county built it, the county owned it. I don't know that we've sold it. I think maybe we're just allowing, a, a, there's a long-term lease on it. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I don't recall that being, I don't ever recall something coming across my desk where we had to sign the sale of it. It could very well have been. I, I, know that, I know that when I came on, we still owned it, but we were, not all of it, not all of it, don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah, they think they skipped out on us. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can ask that question. That's right, yes, yes. Yes, sir. You opened the first box about the Tucker Bay Bridge. Yes. I've been here about a lot of hurt to do it on fairly new, only 1990. Why does it have to come from the It doesn't. That's what the study's for. The NEPA study they're doing right now is to determine where it's going to be. So it could go from Calvert across to uh, Cambridge. It could go up from Rock Hall across to Baltimore. It has not been selected yet. Uh, this is what the study's for. But you got to remember now, how can I put this? You, 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 it, it's, it's easier to widen a road than it is to buy all the easements and all of the environmental issues you have to, to build a new road. So you know, keep that in mind. A anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Good question, because I know that's a hot topic for Symphony Village. And my mother lives down there, my in-laws live there. But right now it's not it's not slated for anything to be done for it for at least six years. So in six years we could move it back another six years. We don't have a necessity to do it. And if, if, the, if the citizens of Centerville don't want it done, the county's saving money. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we don't need to do it. And, and, and until somebody says there's an absolute need, then we'll, we'll address that issue. But right now, it's not slated to be budgeted for six years. Has <laughs> one of the farms close to Symphony Village been sold and going to be developed? I honestly don't know. That's a town question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a town question. Thank you. Anybody else? Excellent. I made my time frame? I'm good. There you go. Thank you.